we're gathered today in the name of Jesus Christ. His word says as we gather in his name, he's in the midst of us. So what we're going to do, Father God, we ask you to receive our praise and our worship because we love you. We adore you. And we're going to express it today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Woo!
Let our song be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You for this next song, but I just realized I forgot my Bible. Does anybody have a Bible and want to come up and read it? strength. Indeed, the world the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Your throne is established from old. 
You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their pounding waves, more than the sounds of many waters, than the mighty breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your testimonies are fully confirmed. Holy, holiness be, uh, befits your house, O oh Lord, forevermore. Don't 
magnificent. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We recognize those who believe the kingdom of God is within us. But there's coming a day when he's coming back to this earth. He will set things right. And his voice will be like thunder. There will be no one who will escape. No one. We worship you, mighty God. We lay our lives down to you. And we say, do what you need to do in us, Lord. We worship you, Lord. I pray right now that we would have the knowledge of who you are and you would grant to us spiritual wisdom, spiritual wisdom and understanding and that we would live a life that's worthy of you, Lord God, that we would be a light into darkness, that there would be no one who can see anything but you in us. We walk in your ways. We thank you, Father God. We thank you that you're working within us so that we too can join in that holiness, that we too can walk with you. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord. Because when we cry out to you, when we stand in faith, all of heaven comes and fights for us. We worship you, Lord. Oh, you're holy. Holy, holy, holy. We worship you. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. We recognize you. Bring to us today what we need to hear. Help us to pull the dump lever on unbelief and tradition and the words of men. For we desire your words. Your words are eternal. Your words are spirit and truth. And we say that our spirits are alive because of Jesus Christ. And we're here to hear your living word. Quicken our mortal bodies this day by the spirit, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. We receive you, Jesus. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Give him a shout out! Yeah! Give him a shout of victory! We worship you, Lord! Glory is your name! Glory is your name! There's none like you! There's no one to compare to you! No one is equal to you! <laughs> you have destroyed death. And we can say, death, where's your sting? <laughs> we just step into eternity. Our hearts are open. And we're ready to receive. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Well, greet one another and you may be seated. Yes. Woo. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Community Life Church. Those that are here in person and those that are watching online, welcome. We're so glad you've joined us today. We're so glad you're with us today. Um, if you are watching us online via Facebook or YouTube, make sure you like us, subscribe, share, do all the stuff, push all the buttons, you know, because we want the Word of God to get out of this room, right? We want this, the Word of God to flow into every part of this uh, community, amen? And here at Community Life Church, we are on a mission. To help people to know God, find purpose, and experience life. Yes, yes. And it's our belief that until you know God, you're never going to truly experience life. 
I mean, can you make it through life without knowing God? Sure. You can make it through. But you're not going to enjoy everything that God has for you. You're not going to experience everything he has for you. And, and the end's not going to be any good either. <laughs> but once you know God and you truly experience life, things just get better and better. Now, I'm not saying every circumstance is good. I'm not saying you're not going to have trials and tribulations. The Bible's pretty clear that stuff's going to happen, right? Yeah. But your life, the value of your life, the, the understanding, the, the growth that you experience is better and better and better. Amen. So anyway, we just want, want people to, to do that, to, to know God, find purpose, and experience life. And uh, so if this is your first time with us, we want to welcome you. Thank you for being here today. If you will look in the seat back in front of you, there's a, there's a card. It looks just like the picture on the screen up there. If you grab that card, fill out those few lines, and take it to the back of the room at the end of service, Pastor Stephen, maybe would like to say hello to you. Um, we'd just like to connect with you a little bit and let you know what's going on here at the church and what, what we have happening. Um, this is the part of service where we receive tithes and offerings. And, you know, I was thinking about this a little bit this morning. If you read through the Old Testament, there's several encounters that people have with God. Right, the angel of the Lord, it's usually called. Abraham had this experience where the angel of the Lord came to visit him, told him he was going to have a child in his old age. Um, I was just reading today in Judges, Samson's father had, had that same experience where an angel of the Lord came to him. There's other experiences like this where, where God came and spoke to people. Gideon had that same thing where the angel of the Lord spoke to him. Most of the in, uh, instances where this happens, the people are inclined, their heart is just inclined to give an offering, to give a food. Usually they're preparing food for him. Right? They say, hey, can you just hang out here for a few minutes? Let me, go, let me go make dinner for you. And then they're like, you know, run home. Hey, we got to kill the goat real quick. we got to kill the sheep, whatever it is. Uh, got to slaughter it real quick. we gotta, we got to cut it up into slices. we got to cook it. on. The, you know, we get, make some fresh bread. It's going to be really good stuff, right? So we're not talking about, like, going and throwing something in the microwave. We're not talking about grabbing yesterday's leftovers. You know, they got the good stuff, right? So in the same, in the same way, as we're preparing our hearts to give to God today, I want to think, are we, giving him God, are we giving him our best? Are we giving him something fresh? Are we giving him something good? Or are we just giving him leftovers? If you have a friend come to visit you that you haven't seen in, in 15, 20 years or something, you know, a good friend, and you want to reconnect with them, and they, they travel a long way to visit you, when they show up, are you going to give them peanut butter sandwiches? No. I hope not, right? <laughs> Unless that's the best you got. If that's the best you got, go for it. But I hope that you're going to give them something good, right? You're going to cook the best thing that you have for them. You're going to give them a nice fat, you know, steak or backstrap. Yeah, I'm thinking you're probably going to go over to, you know, get, get, get some steaks uh, from Brosie's over there is what I'm thinking. I, I don't know. Something like that. You're going to get something good, right? Because you want to give them the best. And in the same way as we give our God our tithe and our offering, we want to give him our best. We don't want to give him, you know, peanut butter sandwich on stale bread. That would be insulting, right? Yeah. But sometimes as we give, that's kind of our mentality is I'm just going to give him whatever I have left over. If I have, if I have a dollar or two left after I do everything I want to do, then I'll give it to him. And God's saying, wait a second. This is the, the, the God of creation coming to visit you. He deserves your best. So as we give this morning, I just want you to think about that. And then as we give, we have several options and uh, ways to give here. You can give through text to give, the Simple Give app. You can go online to clcbutler.org slash give. All these things are easy. Then also, if you're here, you can uh, look at the seat in front of you. There is a, an envelope. You can put cash or checks in an envelope, and there's a box in the back. You can drop it off at the end of service. All kinds of ways. We try to make it easy for, e as easy for you to give as possible. But as you're giving, I just want you to think, am I giving God my best or am I giving him leftovers? Right? So uh, i got a couple other quick things I want to talk about this morning. One is that we are um, looking for additional volunteers to serve in housekeeping. I mentioned this last week. I want to mention it again. If you have some time that you can, that you can give, whether it be just one or two hours a week, one or two hours a month even, to help us out, that would be helpful. Um, if, you could, if you could do that, we'd, we'd love to have you uh, sign up. Um, you can go to our website and go into the events tab and complete a short volunteer form. And then that'll get you set up in the line to be able to do that. Um, I also want to remind everybody to join us here for prayer meeting on Tuesday morning yes. and Wednesday evening. Tuesday morning from 1030 to 1130 and Wednesday evening from 7 to 830. And I got to tell you guys, these are power packed times. There is there is something changing yes. in the environment as we get together and pray. Yes. So if you haven't been taking advantage of this, please, if, if at all possible, come 
Tuesday morning, Wednesday evening, whatever you're available, come one, come both, whatever, and experience the presence of God. You will be blessed. It, it, it is vital, I believe, to the, to the strength of the church. Because really the strength of the church is not in how many people show up on a Sunday morning. The strength of the people is how many people are actually praying and how many people are actually seeking the face of God. Amen? So come and join us Tuesday morning, Wednesday evening. That's right. Learn how to pray. If you don't know, this is a great opportunity to learn. Christmas season just around the corner, and today uh, many of you know that we are con concluding our collection of Operation Christmas Child boxes. Uh, Operation Christmas Child is a ministry that takes small gifts donated by people like us, takes them around the world, along with the gospel message to, uh, to reach kids all over the place. So um, thank you to everybody that has given today. And, and we have a bunch of boxes back there. I was really excited to see, you know, see the, the stack of them back there. If maybe you forgot, well, as soon as we're done, run home and grab it real quick. <laughs> but we, we want to make sure that we, uh, that we get these in. They are due today. We have to do that. Um, but thank you to everybody that's participated in this. This really is a ministry that, that I believe is going to have eternal rewards. It's a small thing, but has big consequences. Amen? And speaking of Christmas... Next Sunday, November 29th, yes. after service, we're going to decorate this place. Inside and out, we're going to put some lights up, we're going to put some decorations up, and we need help. Yes. So if you can stick around next week after service, please plan to, to stay here for a little while, help us decorate. We'd be great, we'll, we'll be very grateful for your help. Uh, we want to make this place uh, look good and, and just uh, celebrate our king, amen? Right. All right, and uh, on that note. I want to welcome Pastor Mamie to come and share the Word of God. Thank you for that welcome. Good to see you this morning. Well, we are in part seven of this series on healing spirit, soul, and body. Are you getting some new thoughts out of it? Some new challenges out of it? Yeah. I'd just like to uh, pray before we begin this morning. Father, um, I pray, Lord, just like the Apostle John when he wrote 3 John, that we would be people who would prosper and be in health, Lord, even as our soul prospers. So help us this morning, Lord, in our mind, in our spirit, to hear from you. And Father, I pray that our spiritual eyes would be opened to see better and know all the wonderful gifts that you've given us with salvation. Yes. And Father, that our whole spirit and our whole soul and our body, Lord, like it says in Thessalonians, would be, would be preserved blameless unto your coming. Because you are faithful, Lord. You said you are faithful and you will do it. And so, Father, just move in this place by the power of your spirit. Yes. Lord, it is not by the might of man or the power of man, but it is by your spirit. Your spirit is what destroys and breaks the yoke your anointing is what breaks it and so we ask you holy spirit just to anoint the words that i speak move in the hearts of people move in the atmosphere of this room heal bodies bring the the knowledge of salvation heal our emotions heal our minds and we just give you all the glory for it and we approach your word with anticipation yes. and faith in jesus name amen amen, amen. and so uh, we have covered a lot of things over the past six weeks, and uh, I've said this over and over again, but I'm going to say it again, that healing was provided for us through salvation. The, the one message I said, it's like a, a nesting box, that the outside of the box would say salvation, but inside of that box are many more boxes of all the gifts heaped upon gifts that we've been given through salvation, and healing is one of those gifts. So when Jesus uh, hung on the cross, he was bearing uh, the penalty for your sin and my sin, and there was a curse with the, uh, the penalty that came with sin, and sickness was a part of that. So when he forgave us of our sins, he was healing our bodies at the same time. And he offers us salvation. We know that salvation is something that we cannot earn, uh, something that you cannot ever merit. You cannot ever do enough things to earn your salvation. Salvation comes to us as a free gift. Therefore, healing comes to us as a free gift. And Jesus often said when he ministered to people in the Gospels, he said, your faith has made you whole. And so our faith has something to do with the healing of our bodies. 
Our faith, he said, will make us whole. And, and it's vital that we understand this, that somebody has to have faith, because it says in, in Scripture, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're in a kingdom that is based on the law of faith. So whether it's the person who's ministering healing has faith, and maybe the person sitting there or, or receiving doesn't, but it'll still work that way. But it works even better when the person re wanting healing, needing healing, has faith for it, and the person ministering has faith. When the two of those people come together, I believe there's more power available to us. And so it's important that we get into the Word of God and uh, grow our faith. This is one thing that I said, too, that we've all been given a measure of faith, but it's up to you what you do with it. Your faith can and will grow in confidence for God's will to heal you if you feed upon the Word of God and specifically about healing. If you need healing in your body, you know, don't go looking for scriptures necessarily about finances or relationships. Those, all those things are good, but search the Word of God about healing. And uh, I, I think about Jesus, how he, he mentioned in the parable of the sower, which he said, if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand all the parables about the kingdom. So this parable of the sower is important, but he likened the word of God to a seed that gets planted in your heart. And he talked about rocks and thorns. There's conditions of the soil or the heart that sometimes need to get paid attention to. I mentioned by casting down imaginations, it's, it, he said in that parable, uh, he said, you're going to have to take out rocks and thorns out of your heart. So we need to pay attention to the condition of our heart. Because if we, plant, if we take out the rocks and the thorns, the things that will hinder the word of God from taking root, the Bible calls the word of God incorruptible seed. So we plant the incorruptible seed in our mind, in our heart, it will take root. And it'll produce a harvest because seed, just like if you're a farmer, you plant seed in the ground, you would expect that seed to come forth after its own kind, right? And so that's how we have to approach this. There, there are parallels uh, in the natural that Jesus uses to spiritual things. So if we want a healing harvest in our life, we need to be planting healing seed inside of our mind and heart. And so the importance um, of attending to God's word, Proverbs 4, attend to my word, incline your ear to my sayings, keep it in the midst of your heart. It cannot be overstated. It's all based upon our confidence in the knowledge of God's will and in, of what he says in his word. And again, I say this, like, remember we talked about, I mean, the title of the series is Healing for Spirit, Soul, and Body. If you're born again, you are born of God's spirit. That's the most, really the most important part of you. God's word is spirit in life and so we build up our spirit our faith we will build up spiritual awareness for god's willingness to heal you uh, as again we feed upon the word of god i'm going to say it again your spirit man needs food just like your outward body needs food what would happen if you quit eating you would eventually yeah get weaker and weaker and slowly starve to death if you quit eating and uh, we don't ever neglect to feed our bodies, do we? No, we're really good at that. <laughs> Thanksgiving's coming, like we're really going to make use of that day. Yeah, not just three times a day. But I mean, we feed our physical body several times a day, don't we? But here's the thing. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. He called himself the bread of life. So do you see the parallel? Christians need to wake up to this truth. This is our lifeline. Knowledge of the word of God is it. And many Christians are spiritually starving for this reason because they're just not feeding on the word of God. You might come to church. You might do a lot of social activities, which are good, helping people. But if you never crack this Bible open, I can tell you, you are spiritually starving. And so I, I want to show you this quote because um, this man, F.F. F. Bosworth, he wrote this book, Christ the Healer. If you are serious about planting God's word in your heart and understanding the fullness of God's heart for healing, I would recommend this book. It's an old book. I don't know when it was published, probably back in the 70s or something. But he said this. He said, some people wonder why they can't have faith for healing. 
They feed their body three hot meals a day and their spirit one cold snack a week. I mean, because sometimes if you just come to a church, depending on the church that you go to, you might not even read a scripture. You might, you might, you might hear, just hear one little phrase of a scripture, something that is just a little bit motivational. So we need to be feeding ourselves on God's word. And when we do, we can expect that our faith will grow in confidence. For whatever it is, if it's healing or for whatever it is that you need, there are promises in God's word for those things. We just, we need to get our minds renewed and in agreement with God, right? We're never going to get very far if we always think we're right. No, we have to say no. (laughs) God, your word is higher than my thoughts. It's higher than my ways. And so we have to be willing to surrender and submit ourselves to this knowing that if I will follow and obey like a trusting child, my life, my path will grow straighter and, and good things will, will be in my path. So we have to make the effort, like I said last week, to like the man on the mat. Jesus said, get up, rise up, and go forward. We have to make an effort to get our minds renewed and to change. Change is going to take effort. How many of you noticed that in your life? You have to make some effort in our life, but... Of course, Jesus said, if we know the truth, the truth sets us free. And so it's worth every bit of the effort that we can make to plant this in our heart and um, see, the, see the harvest rise up. So today, since it's Sunday before Thanksgiving, I thought I would choose a story, a couple stories in the Bible, in the Gospels about healing that pertain to the, the healing of the lepers. Uh, There are two stories. One is about 10 lepers being healed. The other is about a single man being a leper and being healed. And uh, I chose these because, for for one thing, the the story of the 10 lepers uh, is not just a story about God's compassion and willingness to heal, which it is, but it also shows the power and blessing of a person who has a very thankful and grateful heart and realizes where the blessings in their life have come from. Uh, Because expressing thankfulness and gratitude is a a facet of humility. You know, if you you always think everything is just owed to you, you never say thanks. It's like you just take it and go. But it takes some humility to say, hey, thank you for doing that. Thank you for giving me that. And uh, these are things that we need to be thinking about as we approach Thanksgiving. Amen? We sit around the table. Don't just jump in and eat the food as good as it's going to look and smell. Be sure you stop. Go around the table. Have somebody express. Everybody express something that they're thankful for. It could be the littlest thing. But nevertheless, you're training your heart in humility to be grateful. Okay, so let's just start in this Luke 17, verse 11. This is the story of the ten lepers, and it says this. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, I just want to pause here in the story. Think about it. There, Here's these ten men with leprosy, and that day it was a terrible disease. Your skin would ooze, there would be deep sores, it would be painful, your nerve endings would eventually disintegrate, and so people couldn't feel their fingers, they couldn't feel their toes, their nose. I mean, all your, your sense of uh, sensation would slowly disintegrate. And people were quite frightened about the disease of leprosy because there was no known cure, and it was very contagious. Sounds like things that we're dealing with today, isn't it? <laughs> But people who contracted leprosy were forced to move away from their families. They were forced to move away from the village that they lived in, and they were just pretty much resigned to live out the rest of their life in what was called a leper colony. And so this, this was, I suppose, if you think about it, social distancing at its worst. <laughs> you know, it wasn't just six feet. It wasn't just in your home. It was you leave your family. No more touches, no more hugs. No more intimate contact of any kind. So lepers in that day were outcasts. Again, put out of their homes, out of their villages. They were just considered untouchable people. And if they did come into public view, they were forced to announce themselves, you know, to keep their distance 
and start yelling, unclean, unclean, so the people would know, oh, there's a leper, move away from them. And uh, I, I think to myself, it wasn't just the physical pain of having the disease, but consider the emotional pain, the image that you would have of yourself, the loneliness. You're never going to be touched again, except maybe by the people that you're living in this leper colony with. And the humiliation. So if you're ever out in public, you had to always announce yourself, like, I'm the outcast. Move away from me. Don't touch me, anybody. Don't come near. So these men, okay, they see Jesus. They had to have heard who he was. They see him in the distance. He's coming their way. You can imagine their excitement. There's Jesus. This is our opportunity. You know, this is, this is our dream come true. This could be the greatest moment of my life. I'm going to be healed. And so they cry out to him. I mean, they were unashamed about it. They just cry out, Jesus, you know, have mercy on us. And I believe these men understood the willingness and the compassion of the Lord to heal. They knew what the Pharisees were like. I and mean, we've looked at several stories along the way about the Pharisees. It's like the man last week on the mat. He's like, today's the Sabbath. Get back to your mat. Today's not the day to get healed. So they knew what the general public and what the religious people would have said. But they trusted in Jesus' willingness. They must have heard what he was like. And so they just cry out unashamedly for mercy. They knew they weren't worthy. And I look at that situation, I think sometimes... T- Today, our problem is pride. We have a hard time looking weak before people. You know, to give up and admit your deep need for change, for God's mercy. It's just, it's sometimes I think it can just be, we think we're showing too much weakness. Because our culture, our society lifts up independence. You can do it. I mean, and at some point, it's kind of funny because there are two sides of the coin. At some point, you do, like, get up and go. But at other times, you, to, to start that path, sometimes we need to bow our knee before God and go, I can't do it. I'm undone. I am desperate. So we, don't, we shouldn't always just think, I need to have this look. Even people come to church and try to have it all together. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm good. Meanwhile, maybe you're crumbling on the inside. Because we're just maybe too prideful to ask for help. We, f- we fear being judged. But these lepers weren't afraid of Jesus. Because Jesus didn't judge them. Jesus didn't look down on them. And look at what this next verse says. I mean, he was moved with compassion. It says, when he saw them, this is verse 14. He said, he just said this, go show yourselves to the priest. From a distance, he just looks at him and he goes, go show yourself to the priest. And it said, and as they went, they were cleansed. He just simply spoke a command. Go show yourselves to the priest. I mean, the law required that a leper had to show themselves to a priest if their body was healed to confirm the healing before they were going to be allowed back out into society. So they understood what that meant. Go show yourself to the priest. That must mean I'm going to be healed, right? So they believed and they obeyed, but they didn't start out immediately healed. It said, and as they went, it was a progressive thing. As they went, they were healed. I mean, what if they stopped and said, well, wait a minute. What if we're not healed by the time we get to the priest? I mean, just do it all now, Jesus. Can't you just make me whole right now? But there was some demand on faith and obedience there for them to just say, all right. He said, go show yourself to the priest. I'm going to do what he said. So it took some faith. To put action to those words, to the command of Jesus, just like it does, you know, for us in the word of God. And it was a progressive healing. I can just imagine them going along and looking at one another, looking at themselves and going, oh, my God, like my skin, look at this sore, it's starting to heal up. Or I I can feel my fingers or my toes, like I can can feel my feet again. You can just imagine, it's like this is happening. This is what I've longed for. This is the miracle in my life that I've been waiting for. Like They were just experiencing the very goodness and the compassion of God. They knew they didn't deserve it. But look what verse 15 says something really surprising. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet 
and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. He was a half-breed, as they called it. He wasn't, even a, he wasn't even a Jew that would be considered under the covenant. See, it, it doesn't say that how far they, they made it till they got to the priest. I, I really believe that as they went before they even got to the priest, because it said they all were cleansed. They all noticed, we are healed. And yet, only one goes back to thank Jesus for the most amazing miracle of their life. I mean, nine of them could have thought, well, I'm just going to go to the priest. I can't wait to get my life back. I'm just going to go, look at this. You know, I just want to live again. And you, we can understand some of that. We can understand some of that. But thankfulness and gratitude brought this man something more than just the cleansing of his body. So, again, how many of them out of ten turned back to thank and honor God? Just one. Just one. When he saw he was healed. Look at verse 17. Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Now you can almost sense like Jesus being dumbfounded at this. Like you were begging. You were just crying out. In your deep distress, your life was basically over. <laughs> you were going to survive out all your days just apart from people and then die. And then I came into your life. <laughs> and just in sheer compassion and willingness, you got your life back. You know, and I think to myself, Jesus was offering more uh, than just the cleansing of their body. He was offering eternal life to these people. And they said, I, mean, I think nine said yes or to just the cleansing. And there was just one who wanted more. More than just the physical healing of the body, but eternal life. So then he said to him, this is the one, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. So this man not only found physical cleansing for his body, but even more importantly, he found the whole source. He found the gift giver. He found salvation and the gift of life. Because that word, well, rise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Now, when you read that, you could just think in terms of, well, that meant healing. But if you look that word up in the Greek, that word well means is the Greek word sozo for salvation. So in other words, your faith has made, has saved you, which is a bigger picture than just the cleansing of their bodies. The other nine got cleansed. They did not get saved. He said, your faith has made you well, because it's a different word. If you look for cleansing, the Greek word, if you go back and look through that story, it is a different word. It does mean clean. It does mean, you know, purified which if your skin is clean and purified, it would be healed. But there was something deeper in the soul that Jesus knew all 10 men needed. They needed salvation. They needed to understand the fullness of the kingdom and what he was doing there. And so as wonderful uh, as healing is in our physical body, we all want to be physically healed, right? I also think to myself, Jesus said, what does it profit a man? You know, if he gains the whole world and, he, and you forfeit your soul, healing for our physical body is not everything. It's not the end of the story. I mean, the nine were content, again, to just get healed and just get on with their life. And, sometimes, and I think to myself, Jesus will do this. Again, it's not based on merit. You know, for myself and the natural and... You know, sometimes over the years you minister healing, and it's easy to put on that judgmental side. Well, you know, is this, is this person even going to serve God? And I think Jesus didn't even care. He just healed those other nine and said, it's like he was saying, the kingdom of God has come near you, but it didn't come within you, which is really the most important thing. And so we can see some things from this story uh, that the forgiveness of sin and the healing of the spirit and soul 
is really the most important thing to the Lord. And so God's compassion to uh, offer healing to you and me, to unworthy people, is evident. Just by healing the nine who were ungrateful, never even came back to say thank you. But he was still willing to use his power on their behalf because Jesus died for the sins of the world. Amen. And the story teaches us also to cultivate a grateful heart. We don't want to be like the nine. We all tend to want to consider ourselves like the one. Well, I would have been grateful. But then look at your own life. I look at my own life and I think, how often has God blessed me with something and, you know, I didn't pause to appreciate it. To say thank you. It could be something big. It could be something little. Because every day of our life is a gift from God. You know, if you have breath in your lungs, your heart is beating, it's doing that because of the life of God that we have on the inside of us. But I, and I think we need to approach Thanksgiving with this in mind. Because the world is just so full of animosity and division right now that we've been given a gift that's beyond compare. And you have something. You have many things. I have many things to be thankful for in my life. I mean, you could get up and just be thankful that you have running water, that you have a coffee pot in your kitchen. You could make a nice cup of hot coffee. You know, if you're a busy mom, maybe you have a morning to yourself. You could be like, oh, this is such a blessing to have just time to myself. Or a walk in the woods where you're just looking at the trees, smelling some fresh air and going, this is awesome, Lord. Little things that we could be thankful for. Maybe a, a thoughtful friend calls you on the phone or sends you a text message when you're feeling down, and you're like, that's just what I needed. Oh, thank you, God, for that person thinking about me. Or anything, little snuggles. I think about snuggles with our grandkids or with your own kids. It's like hearing their laughter, their giggles. These are little things that we, we can be thankful for. Sometimes it takes time in hindsight you know, when we look back and we go, I should have been more grateful. That was actually a nice time. That was actually a good thing that was happening. I didn't recognize it. Because we can just be so busy pushing on to the next thing. Here's a, here's a quote that I liked. What if you awoke with only the things you have thanked God for? <laughs> Today. Or tomorrow, let's say you woke up and you didn't hear this message and all you had around you were the things that you've been thanking God for. Would you have very much? Would you feel like, ah, oh, my room and my life is pretty empty? <laughs> I think it's a really good thing to consider. What if you awoke tomorrow with only the things that you've been thanking God for today? Yeah. I think we would voice a lot more thankfulness every day. Because we would want more things every day in our life that God has blessed us with. And so I want to look, too, uh, at another story. Let's see how much time we have here. Yeah, good. We're, we're working good on time today. <laughs> I want to look at another story. This is about the healing of a leper, but this is about a single man who had leprosy. I, I took the version from Luke 5. It's really in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's in Luke. But I'm going to read the account today from Luke 5. And then we're going to watch a video clip uh, of, a, of a portion of this same uh, scripture. And it's from The Chosen. How many of you have watched anything from The Chosen? Well, you're in for a treat if you haven't. <clears throat> we're going to show you the clip just here in a moment. Uh, the Chosen is like a, this uh, multi-season series. It's based on the true stories of the gospel, and it's not really like a, any Jesus movie that you've seen maybe in the past. Some of them are good. Some of them maybe not so good. Uh, this one, I believe, has a real anointing on it. For, for anybody who's watched it, God's hand is on this production, and his anointing is on this work because they do an incredible job of making the story and the gospel come alive. Like you could really, you could see Jesus being like this and you could see yourself being like the disciples. And that's what's important, that we can read the word of God. And it's not just like some kind of formal words on a page, but you find yourself in the story. That's when it becomes real to us. And that's when it makes, starts to make a difference in our life. So, okay, so we're going to read from Luke 5, uh, verse, starting with verse 12. 
story goes like this. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Now, I don't think most people struggle with God's power, the, God's ability to heal. I don't think anybody would say, well, I, God is able. He's all-powerful. It's his willingness that we struggle with. Is he willing to use his power on my behalf to heal me? And he is. Amen. Scripture says that he delights in showing mercy to his people. And I think about it in Ephesians where it says, he will do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you can ask or think. So he delights to show us good. It, he is willing. Yes, he is. And so Jesus, when he said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Verse 13 says this, Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man. This time he touches the man. And he says, I am willing. He said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Now, in the other story, Jesus just spoke a command from a distance. That had the power to heal those people. But in this story, he really does the unthinkable, what's unthinkable in public. He reaches out and he touches the man to minister healing to him. And, G and then it says this, verse 14, Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Now, why would Jesus say, don't tell anybody? Because the Pharisees were jealous of him. And they kept going uh, to the people and, and think, saying that this man's just a fanatic rogue. He's just some kind of wild preacher. And he's stirring up trouble. And they didn't want trouble from the Roman government because the Roman government was getting mad that the crowds were following Jesus. And so he, he knew he had more work to do. So he said, just don't tell anybody. Go to the priest and show that you're cleansed. But you can imagine, after going to the priest, showing you're cleansed, people that would know you would go, what happened to you? You would have to tell the story, right? I mean, you couldn't keep it quiet. It said, yet the news about him spread all the more. Yeah. So that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, of their sicknesses. So I want us now to uh, watch this clip, and then we'll talk a little bit more. Hello. Hello. Shalom. It's a beautiful day for picking flowers. Well, if you like the boy iris, lupine, and anemone, I sell them in the market. Is that Egyptian? Yes, I grew up there. My father was from Ethiopia. Shaparnaya makamteanak. Shabuta sasha sutne sashrutu. Natiu patanaya and sunu mahatia. Tamar anaki nani otiahuanu. Anaki yeshua nanazrati. Atipuarta snotia. Hakmunak. Shalom to you all. Shalom. Shalom. You were speaking Egyptian. I lived there when I was a boy. Why were you there? We had to leave Bethlehem when I was two years old because of Herod. He... You lived in Bethlehem? During the massacre of the innocents? I did. I know the story. Herod had every child in the area under the age of two killed. Yes. But it was very sad. Not to spoil this beautiful day or anything, huh? <laughs> Come on. It's a leopard. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 Rabbi you handle his disease. You. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. 
Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you can do. I know you can heal me if you are willing. Seek your own honor. Please just do me this one thing. But what do I tell people? Go. Show yourself to the priest. Let them inspect you and see that you are cleansed. Make the proper offering in the temple as Moses commanded. And go on your way. <laughs> Where's an extra tunic? Just one of you, just one of you. That's enough. Green is definitely your color. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> That's your savior. That's right. That's our God. That is, that is such a wonderful picture of the mercy and the compassion of the Lord. And is that the Jesus that you know? That's the important thing, that we understand his heart, his goodness. So if you would need healing in your own body, would he be? Re would he reach out to you today and say, "I am willing. Be healed." He would. There's no reason that he wouldn't, because it's all based on his goodness, not our goodness. I want you to just close your eyes for a second. You know, just let a moment like this minister to your heart. Just. Close your eyes and just be alone with Jesus for a moment. You know, see yourself in that place. See yourself like that leper. And if you're, I know you're able if you're willing. Look at his face looking at you. Just feel him giving you that loving hug. Like a full embrace hug. Not just a little tap, but a full embrace hug. I am willing. Be healed. And just feel like, what would that power feel like? Just going through your body. Cleansing you, healing you. You just want to hold on to him forever. Hear him say to you, I am willing. Be healed. Sometimes, you know, we, we strive so much, even things. We make confessions and we, you know, know the word of God. And 
sometimes we're still doing a lot of things in our own strength. Sometimes healing comes and we just rest in his goodness. We just give ourselves over. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Faith is a rest. Just lay down all of your, lay down everything you've been trying and just get and feel the embrace of God. His love for you, his willingness. This is what will heal you. This is what heals our souls. Because sometimes all of our striving, all of our willpower to do what's right just creates more frustration and anxiety and fear inside of us. Healing sometimes is just found by complete surrender. <laughs> like Jesus, just, I am willing. Rest, be made whole. Feel that hug. Feel that willingness. Just open your heart wide. These are the moments, like these are moments that do heal us. They reset something on the inside of us. Have the worship team come up, and we're just going to end here. We're going to close out by singing a simple song. And just keep ourselves in the presence of God and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Some of you might know this song. It's just really simple. If you're from an older generation, it's, you are the God that heals, healeth me. And so we want to make this declaration. We want to sing it to God. And we'll just tell you the words as it goes along, because the words aren't even up on the screen. You can just keep your eyes closed even and just listen for a little bit. <clears throat> you are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. That's the simple words to the song. But you know, when you come to the Lord with a thankful heart and express it with gratitude, something happens. There's a connection there. We can't be afraid of these kind of moments where we, we release ourselves emotionally into the heart of God. You are the Lord, my healer. This is the way this song goes. Let me sing a little bit. You are the God. You are the God. That healeth me. That healeth me. Make it personal. You are the you Lord. Are the Lord my, my healer. You sent, you sent your word. word.
lepers, to make the lame to walk and the blind to see. Nothing's too difficult for you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the power of your anointing. And Lord, I pray that we don't let these moments slip by. That even when we get home, we revisit these places in our heart. Jesus, your willingness to heal. Your love and compassion for us. You know, if you have need for healing in your body, I want you to come up after the service. We pray with you. Lay hands on you. Believe with you. The anointing, Lord, that comes through our hands, it's not by a person's might, it's by the power of the Lord. If you come in faith, and we're in faith, something special is going to happen, the healing is going to happen. If anybody is in here today or at the sound of my voice, talked about the cleansing of those lepers, but only one was saved. And salvation is the most important thing in our lives. And we're all kind of like those lepers, corrupted by sin in our life. Jesus came to set you free from sin in the past. So if you are here today and you want to give him your life, you want to be free from the power of sin in your life. You can raise your hand. We'll pray a prayer with you. Anybody in here? Maybe at the sound of my voice. I'm just going to finish off with a simple prayer of salvation. Jesus, say this with me. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new creation. I thank you, Lord, for your love and goodness. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's our hope and our prayer that in some way today, whether through the worship, through the message, or through serving with other believers, that you and your family have been encouraged to take another step closer to walking with Jesus today. And on your way out, don't forget to drop off your offering in the box back there. If this is your first time, you can drop off visitor cards back there. But I also want to remind you, as Pastor Mamie said, that, that we're still open for, for praying for anybody that may need healing in their body or may need something else they need prayer with. You know, we want to pray with you. Our, our prayer partners are over here. They're ready to pray with you, and they want to pray with you. So make sure you take advantage of that. Also, Pastor Steve and Mamie are going to stay up here as well and, and, and pray with anybody that, that, that needs prayer this morning. Um, but those of you that need to get going, have kids in the back, I understand we need to go you know, pick them up and make sure that uh, we relieve the uh, children's workers back there. But thank you all for joining us today. Have a great week. Be blessed. You're dismissed. <laughs>